Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, and apologies for those online, it says Matthew, but we are reading from the Gospel of Luke, um, and so we will read from the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. Hear God's word for us this morning as we hear the parable of the great banquet. When one of those at the table with Jesus heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out and quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. This is God's holy word for us this morning. Have you ever made an excuse when for missing an event that you had been invited to? Maybe it was honest, a real conflict that you couldn't change or adjust. Maybe... It was more of a little white lie to get you out of the invitation. Perhaps you developed a story of why you were too busy or why you couldn't attend. Our excuses are really for our host, aren't they? They become our excuses to hopefully convince our host to believe that we are unable to come. This morning, we find ourselves gathered at Jesus, with Jesus at the table when he invites those present to hear a parable, the great banquet parable. This encounter with Jesus invites us to consider what happens when we make excuses, what happens when the invited guests don't or won't show up. Who should be invited? Who has been left off the guest list? How does God react? And then, what does God do? Picture this great banquet for a moment. Like previous weeks, it is a huge table or tables in a huge room with tables set for queens and kings lavishly set for a full course meal with all the trappings. Unlike previous weeks, the guests are not showing up. There are plenty of seats available to choose from because they are all empty. A great banquet for royalty and none of the invited guests arrive. The invitations were sent then on the day of the banquet, the second invite that the party was ready was delivered, both part of Jewish traditions. And yet the tables sit empty for the lavishly set table and the fabulous meal ready to be served. When no one shows up, the host sends a servant out to the town to gather anyone they encounter to come. Even when the new invitees take their place around the table, there is still room. 
So the host tells his servant to go back out this time to the country roads and outside the town and gather guests and bring them to the party. The host desires for his home to be filled, his table crowded, and guests all enjoying the great banquet. Notice, of course, that none of those who were originally invited are present. They made their excuses and didn't come, yet there is now a party. The host has filled his home and table with guests, just not those with origin that were originally invited or expected. The great banquet of this parable is representative of the great feast in the kingdom of God the great messianic banquet to come, a common association throughout scripture of the future kingdom with a great feast. When Jesus tells this story of the great banquet, it is hard to say how plausible the excuses really are. One person has bought land and must see it, Another has five yoke of oxen that must be tried out, and another offers that he just got married. Some of us may hear these excuses as legitimate reasons for missing the banquet, reasons tied to one's economic or social obligations. Others of us may hear them as an effort of getting out of attending. Either way, one thing is clear. The host isn't buying it. When the host imagines these tables left empty, he is angry. Upset that his generosity has been refused and probably the embarrassment that could be caused. Angry that now he must save face and find substitutes to fill the empty chairs. The meal is all prepared. The party is ready. Remember, Jesus is sharing this parable with a group of Pharisees, the social elite sitting at the table, probably the same dinner party we visited last Sunday at the home of a Pharisee who had invited Jesus to his table. They get what the host is experiencing up to this point. The Pharisees understand that the guest list was drawn up, invitations were sent, RSVPs requested, and the guests expected to come. They might also share in the frustration of the host when guests start giving excuses and not showing up, leaving empty chairs at the banquet. They get it. Empty chairs and tables are embarrassing. But then Jesus takes it a step further. In the parable, the host tells his servant, go out at once into the streets of town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Forget the social order, the host says, and fill up my table and empty chairs. Forget replacing people of status with other people of status. Forget it all and fill this table up. Fill this banquet table up with the who's who of the kingdom of God. Last week, we talked about the experience of the social elite host who invites guests to then be invited back. That scratch my back, I'll scratch yours has worked until... He is rebuffed by his peers. His response is one of anger, so he responds by breaking the social order. Go out and bring in the people I would not normally, or maybe ever, invite to my table. The poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. The same list Jesus shared in the parable from last Sunday. Shared at the same table, to the same group of Pharisees gathered at the same Sabbath meal. A parable with tables and chairs filled, not by the who's who 
of this world, but the who's who, the kingdom of God. This, of course, leads the Pharisees and maybe us to wonder what excuse would we make to avoid a seat at such a banquet? This parable in Luke's Gospel invites the question of how we respond in the face of the chairs and tables left empty. Left empty by flippant excuses, left empty by severed relationships, left empty by loss of loved ones. How does our grief and sadness, our anger and mourning transform? How does it reshape us? What about those empty, expected responses that may try to fill those spaces left empty in our lives? Or our wounded pride that we have tried to cover up with a band-aid? Or our broken heart? you to hear these words from Jan Richardson's poem, And the Table Will Be Wide. And the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, and the arms will open wide to gather us in, and our hearts will open wide to receive, and we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free, and our aching will be met with bread. And our sorrow will be met with fruit of the vine. And we will open our hearts to the feast without shame, and we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair, and we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungry world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere will be the feast. This parable is all about God's table. The table that will be wide the great banquet of eternity to which we all have an invitation, the table of God's lavish generosity, openness, bounty, and extravagance, the table of weddings and banquets, dedications and offerings, the table that through Christ, God shows extravagant goodness, grace, and mercy like no other. Jesus walking through the towns, teaching on the hillsides, sharing parables, sitting at table, and breaking bread to show, to demonstrate, the wideness and breadth of God's love, the extravagance of God's invitation and welcome. Welcome in the community. This extravagance is offered even in the face of excuses, even in the midst of sadness and disappointment, frustration, and even anger. Extravagance that is offered even in the face of tables not yet filled and chairs that are empty. An extravagant love that never quits. It just keeps growing and expanding, drawing in the ones on the margins, the ones not originally invited, and finding them a place at the table. Going through the towns, out to the roads and lanes, hillsides and seashores, and inviting people to come, to find a seat, to be a part of the great banquet. The great banquet that has no end, that will never be filled, that will always, always have enough. 
It is a feast of plenty where there is always room. It is the wide table where Christ, our host, invites us all to sit. In this season of Lent, as we enter the final week of our 40-day journey, this story, the table with Jesus, invites us to imagine Christ's table and find ourselves there. A table that might look more like the church potluck, where all are invited to come. The fair is not fancy or prestigious. The potluck table that offers genuine hospitality, builds community to everyone and anyone who shows up. At Christ's table where we find ourselves among those who are grieving and mourning among those who are hungry, a justice left undone, and who feel pushed to the fringes by an unfair social order. To find ourselves among the who's who of God's kingdom, knowing we always have a place if only we will accept the invitation. May we jump at the invitation and not search for excuses when it comes to the kingdom of God. May we as God's own, loved and be loved. May we allow such feelings of sadness, grief, and even anger to instead open our hearts to all God's people longing for home, a welcome, an invitation and a place at the table. And may it be that at that wide table, we might find ourselves transformed by the love and extravagant generosity of Jesus the Christ, our King, who will always make room, who will always prepare a seat, and who will always have bread enough to break for all God's people. As it is at God's table, may it be so at our own. Amen.